Hi, so welcome. We're gonna to talk today about what every British needs to know out about a very American iconic thing, and that is salad dressing. So it doesn't seem like a big deal. Well, let me tell you, every American has at least two bottles of salad dressing in their fridge. And when you go out to order a meal, like it's a thing. So it's a thing you have to make a decision about. And if you're British, that's important because one, you will have no idea what they're talking about when they say, what kind of salad dressing would you like? Um, and then they're gonna list like four or five or six maybe. And then two, once they've listed those, you might think you know what some of those are and you may know what some of those are, but some of them are not what you think they are and most of them are American, which means you will never have heard them if you haven't hit the US before. So my British friends, I will help to clarify this for you a little and I'll start by showing you what's in my fridge. Um, mostly because I have friends and guests come over because I don't, mm, it's not something we eat a lot of, I'll be honest. Here we go. Into the American fridge we go for the first installment. And here I am. Three salad dressings. Needs to be refrigerated once opened. Okay, so let's talk about the first salad dressing that's very, very popular here in the US. And actually, it's more than a dressing, it's actually a dip. Like, you might see it with, like, um, if people have carrots or celery out, if there's a game day or you just have people over, they might put this in. People will also dip their, um, like, chicken fingers or wings. Chicken wings, like the big deal with the chicken wings. So this guy's actually like the most popular and the biggest salad dressing, and I had never heard of it before at all. And it's called Ranch. Okay, so Ranch was invented by a contract plumber in Alaska. It's basically a buttermilk dressing, and he perfected the recipe when he bought um, a ranch with his wife in California. I guess they had cows, whatever. Anyway, he eventually sold his dressing recipe and the name of the ranch to go along with it, which is Hidden Valley Ranch, big brand name in dressings, um, to Clorox for $8 million. So in 1972, he cashed out and gave them, I mean, 1972, $8 million was a lot of money. So I think that tells you how big dressings are here. So anyway, so Clorox is a household company. So they're, they're kind of like a bleach, dental um, but much, much more than that. When people say Clorox in the US, what they're actually meaning is bleach. It doesn't have to be bleach, they will use the word Clorox. So it's a giant company, kind of like a Unilever. Anyway, they gave him eight million for this. And now you'll find it everywhere in the US. It, it's not bad. I mean, you know, it's like a calling, calling uh, salad dressing. Like if you have something spicy, you might use this. Buttermilk and that kind of stuff in there. Next, things you might be offered are like a balsamic vinaigrette, you'll know what that is. You might be offered Italian dressing. Now that sounds like something you might know, and you probably do, but this is actually, like we've opened this guy and opened it a little, I, I didn't like it at all. So it's um, pretty liquid, and it's what you kind of imagine it might be, which is, you know, olive oil and some whatever, but you see it's got like a ton of little bits in it. That's like little bits of pimento. It's got like a little bit of a kick to it, which you kind of don't really expect with the Italian. So um, it's okay. Like I said, it's not as clear as you would expect for something that you're calling Italian. And again, um, made by the Americans for the American market. So try that if you want. Other salad dressings. Okay, so I've got like a Caesar here. And I think Caesar's become really popular in England, so I won't say any more than that. Other than to say that uh, Paul Newman has a whole brand of products over here, huge. So um, I don't know if he sells stuff in England. I'll leave that to Joe. Does he sell stuff in England? I'll let you answer that question over there. So other dressings that you might never have heard of. Russian dressing. The Russians haven't heard of it, and I don't think the Ukrainians or anybody else has heard of it, because again, it's another American-created dressing, and it's basically these two ingredients. This guy, it's this guy, and this guy. Sound familiar? Yeah, it's what you would have put on your, um, well, what do we call them in the 80s, the prawn cocktail. Americans don't use the word prawns, by the way. They use shrimp, and I don't know if they, and actually they don't put these on shrimp. Instead they put, wait, let me see if I can find some. Um, yes, I do have some of that. This horseradish sauce, and this is what they tend to put on that kind of stuff. Uh, tartar sauce is actually what they, well, they still use that for the same kind of fishy stuff too. So anyway, so I'll keep going through my fridge and the different sauces. All right, so Russian is basically what you would consider um, Shrimp cocktail sauce. I don't know if I would want that all over a salad, but have at it if that's what you want. 
I don't know if the Russians would want that either. I have no idea where the Russian people came from. I'll tell you that for a fact. Oh, but it was invented in a little town in New Hampshire, so I have no idea what they were doing with that either. So uh, there's something called French dressing. I don't think the French would recognize it either, but it did start out as oil vinegar and then they started adding sugar and some other stuff in there and that's why it became uh, French dressing as a kind of brand in the 50s. But again, like sugar, sugar, sugar. So um, Saladita beware, once you stray off the oil and vinegar path, you are gonna find so much sugar in those dressings, which is fine if you're just putting a little bit, do what you want and just saying, beware. So the other dressings that you might be offered are a Greek, which is what you would kind of know if you know anything Greek, which is olive oil, salt, vinegar, lemon, and um, oregano, pretty much. Greek things are very popular. The Greeks own the diners in the US, so um, that's why the Greek stuff's so popular, I guess. And then you might also get, let's see, a blue cheese dressing, which is basically some blue cheese with some mayo. You see, there's a heavy mayonnaise content to all of this stuff. Um, and every American's gonna have one of these, but I imagine probably in everybody in England has mayonnaise in their fridge too. Joe, does everybody in England have a mayonnaise bottle as well? I'm not really sure. So then, <laughs> so that I think is a little story about dressings and what every American needs to know about, every British person needs to know about dressings, which are predominantly American dressings built for an American market in the US. Good luck, and like I said, order the olive oil and vinegar, which I don't need a bottle for. Thank you so much. So, hello, welcome to England, London. Um, if you're listening to this, then I'm assuming you have just been also listening to my cousin Andy, who has been talking about sources and Using it as an example of some of the confusions that British people might experience <laughs> when they go to the States. So as an accompaniment to that, we're doing it the other way around and bringing you to England and just giving you a little look around the cupboards and uh, a little inside information if you haven't been here before and what you can expect on the same subjects. So as Andy started with sources, <laughs> my and I think one of the things that struck me when she was talking about what she's got in her fridge was um, variety. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you what I've got in mind <laughs> in terms of salad dressings and things you might find in a typical English home and what you get is Um, I'm sorry, that's all I can say. I'm, I'm ashamed and embarrassed that this is the only sauce I have in my fridge. In other fridges you may find mayonnaise, you may find salad cream or some kind of salad dressing. But generally speaking, I think the English tend to make their sauces or have their sauces as already part of their meal rather than adding sauce on top. I may be generalising, but I think in my experience that that's the case. I know certainly if you go to um, an English restaurant, and I'm not, I'm saying English because I mean one of the fantastic things about London is that you can get any kind of cuisine. But if you came here and you specifically wanted to eat English cuisine, and you went to <clears throat> a budget or a medium, a kind of a, a medium budget kind of restaurant, and you had your food and they came up to you, your serve came up to you and said. Um, would you like any sauces with your dinner? They would expect you to say ketchup, mayonnaise, possibly mustard, or vinegar. And if you were to say, oh, have you got any ranch dressing or French dressing or um, <clears throat> one of the other myriad dressings you can get over there, um, they'd look a little bit confused. I think um, some restaurants will have the sauces, I this on the table and they'll also have things like balsamic and olive oil and I think that's a lot more common we tend to eat a lot of um, vinegar or um, <clears throat> kind of French or Italian style dressings so although you may not find everything you want in a restaurant I mean if you go to if you go to uh, 
a kind of a, a posher restaurant, a more expensive restaurant. And I want to warn you, if you ask for sauce, um, you'll get the death stare from the waiter. <laughs> you'll probably be told that um, your dish has been perfectly seasoned already for you. <laughs> and not to be so common. Um, I'm going to swing you around just so you can see into another cupboard, the food cupboard. Um, because here, mm, see me okay, um, generally have things that, you know, you have sauces but they're things that you'll put in a dish or you'll make uh, food from. So, but I will have uh, Italian white wine vinegar, um, cider vinegar, balsamic vinegar, uh, soy sauce, uh, more balsamic vinegar, Greek style, teriyaki sauce, fish sauce, chilli sauce, but all those things are so like if I was going to make a Thai dish, I'd, that's, I'd be, you want that depth of flavour, so you use the fish sauce. If I was making a noodle soup, then that'd be the soy sauce um, and the chilli sauce would, would be ingredients for that. Um, in terms of dressings and stuff, you know, balsamic or vinegar, white wine vinegar, Lemon, olive oil, salt, fresh herbs. That's kind of what you're looking at generally. Um, the only thing that you might, uh, see if I can find it. You might find particularly British, and I don't know where I put it, because I cleaned my cupboards, um, is Worcestershire, 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 Worcestershire sauce, Andy, help me. Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Let's just say Worcestershire sauce. Any help on the pronunciation is great. And um, that's kind of like a spicy, dark brown sauce made of Worcester. I'm assuming, and um, great for putting in. To add a little kick, not chili kick, but a little spicy kick. Uh, to your bolognese sauce goes very well with tomato, goes very well with cheese, which is why the English will sometimes splash it on their cheese on toast before they bake it under the grill. Um, as I've had such a pitiful contribution to make, I may take you shopping and um, take you out to a supermarket and show you what you can buy if you're visiting. Excuse me, socks coming off. Um, but you won't be much. Sorry. See you soon.